I think I met a Craigslist killer, when I, F, was 19, I was looking for a room to rent in the city I was moving to for college. It was about an hour away from my family. I wasn't having much luck and my mom started helping me look for a place. She found an ad on CL for a room for $300 in a house, everything included. The homeowner was a man and he rented the additional rooms upstairs to other women while he lived in the finished basement. The ad stated he rarely ever saw the other roommates because he had a kitchen and his own entrance downstairs and that he preferred women because he had issues with male roommates in the past partying and causing damage, we decided to take a look since it was the cheapest that we could find in the area. My mom and I went to the house to view it. Decent house, decent neighborhood. He opened the door and was very welcoming. He was middle-aged and the kitchen and living room were furnished nicely and clean. My mom loves to talk and get to know people so they were engaged in conversation while I stood there quietly and observed the place. He then said he would show me my room. We head towards the staircase to go up, as I thought, since he said on the phone my room was upstairs with the other roommates, but he opens another door and we follow. He takes us down to the basement and opens a door to a very small room, no closet, and no windows. He proceeds to say this is my room and I will be sharing the bathroom in the hallway with him. And his bedroom did not have a door on it. I was definitely thinking absolutely not this is weird but they were so deep in conversation that I couldn't interject, he then leads us to the upstairs and shows us the other rooms which the doors were open and says they are currently rented. He then starts telling us elaborate stories about the other women, not very nice stories describing drinking problems. My mom was listening intently but I took the time to investigate further. I looked in all three rooms and the bathrooms. There was furniture but not a single item in there that looked like it belonged to a woman, no clothes or anything, only men's clothes in one of the closets. He had no problem with me creeping around his tenants' rooms without their permission. I then heard him tell my mom that he has some of his stuff in their closets but they don't mind and I'm just like him why the hell would a tenant pay you for you to use their space as storage. I was feeling really uncomfortable and started moving them back downstairs as they talked. My mom had mentioned when we arrived that her and my dad were going on vacation the next week but I couldn't go because I had to work. He brought it up again and that I should come by the next week and have dinner with him and the roomies to see if we would all get along. I said sure and we left. As soon as we got in the car, I told my mom I would definitely not be living there. She was dumbfounded. I had to explain to her not only did he lie about the room I would be in, that I was not supposed to be in the basement with him as well as share a bathroom with him and he didn't even have a damn door but also did she not notice how no one else even lived there. She still didn't get it and thought I was just being paranoid and thought he was nice and it was a cheap deal. I had to explain it to my stepdad and get him to tell her by no means would I be living there. I tried to report the post but by the time we got home the day he removed it. I think he planned on murdering me at dinner or abducting me and holding me hostage in that basement room that had no way to escape. I hope that guy hits a tree with his car one day, edit, some details have been coming back to me since I've been answering all of your questions. This happened in 2011 so it's been quite a while. When he took us upstairs there was a wide landing that was surrounded by the rooms. As soon as we go up there, he motions towards one of the rooms and started this long, intricate story about the woman who lived in there and talking about her alcoholism and a crazy ex. He was very exaggerated in how he talked with a lot of gestures. My mom stood there listening to him, I don't know if it was sheer distraction or she didn't want to be rude not listening, but either way I don't recall her ever having a good look around those rooms. I went and looked. All doors were open, had neatly made beds with dark wood bed frames, bureaus with mirrors and nightstands. There were sliding mirror closets and they were empty except for one had men's clothes hanging pushed against one corner. Nothing was on the nightstands other than a lamp and nothing on the bureaus. I went into the bathrooms and there was nothing on the vanity in them other than hand soap. I looked in the showers too but nothing other than bar soap. The bedroom on the left had an empty suitcase laying open on the middle of the bed. This was one of the rooms with the empty closet. After seeing all this, I came back onto the landing and started slowly heading down the stairs. They were still talking and absent-mindedly followed me down to the living room. That's when he mentioned dinner and we left shortly after. 
I think that's why my mom didn't notice a lot and didn't believe me at first. She didn't take more than a quick glance upstairs and when we were in the basement he was just as as talkative, a commenter on here who works with law enforcement pointed out this was probably a sex trafficking situation. The bedroom in the basement is where a victim is kept, drugged, and abused until broken and then trafficked. I honestly think this is more plausible with the situation as well as my city is actually a hotspot for that. I am so grateful we got out of there and I hope my experience could help someone one day notice the details and get out of the situation safely. Stay safe and blessed people. Creepy old guy from Craigslist, a few years ago I moved with my family right before I started college. Unfortunately it was kind of far from the university I had been accepted into, so I had been trying to find a place to rent close to my university. My dad helped me and showed me an ad on Craigslist. There was a nice looking house for rent and it was close to my university. I decided to set up a meeting to go check out the place, I showed up in the afternoon and unfortunately I was alone. My dad said I was an adult and a big guy, so I shouldn't worry about meeting this person. This old guy greeted me and then goes you'll have to follow me to get to the house for rent. I was confused and said your ad said this was the house for rent. Why do I have to go somewhere else? He says this is my house. I'll take you to the one that's for rent. I'm a little concerned at this point and followed him to his other place. I figured if things didn't look right, I'd just leave. We get there and I notice the house looks bad and it looked like people were in it. I didn't see any other cars around, so this seemed odd. He looks at me and says don't you want to check it out? I said I don't know. This isn't what was in your ad and it looks like other people are there. He tells me that other people are checking it out and I could join them, something just felt weird about the whole thing and I told him I wasn't interested anymore. This place looked in bad shape from the outside and appeared to have people in the house. When he asked why I wasn't interested, I told him it was too far of a drive for school and work. He got mad at me and accused me of wasting his time. I said I'm not the one advertising a house and then telling the person it's not the one for rent. He began to glance nervously towards the house and asked if I was sure I didn't want to check it out. I told him no and left. He never contacted me again thankfully, I'm not sure what his intentions were, but something just felt wrong. Maybe he was just trying to show me the house, but I didn't like that he lied about the house to begin with and that there were people inside the house. I'm not sure what was going on there. But I didn't really want to find out. I also didn't like how he kept looking at the house when he was asking if I was sure I didn't want to check it out. It seemed so bizarre how he went from being mad at me to getting kind of desperate for me to go inside. Craigslist ad, teen girl clothes for sale, I had just gotten out of high school and I was cleaning out my closet. I decided to post an ad on Craigslist, the title, teen girl clothes for sale, I received a few creepy messages but nothing too scary, plus I needed the money so I waited a few days for a serious buyer. That's when Annie emails me. Her message said something along the lines of, hey, can you meet in the Walmart parking lot, I'd like to buy all of your clothes today, I was so eager to sell them but I didn't want to go to a parking lot alone so I asked my mom to come with me and she agrees. I let Annie know that I can meet anytime between 5 and 7, that's when she asks for my phone number and I gave it to her. Back then I gave my number to anyone who asked, don't do that. So I'm texting this girl trying to arrange a time to meet when she tells me that she has to wait for her mom to get home from work southwest she can drive her to Walmart, I'm immediately relieved because I'm thinking, okay great, she's bringing her mom, I'm bringing mine, we're meeting in public, all is good, all was not good. We agreed to meet up at 6.30 at the far right side of the parking lot. I was excited to get rid of all these clothes and get some money too. We head to the side of Walmart, park and wait, I text her and let her know that we're there waiting and the first red flag to leave should have been her reply. Are you alone? What kind of car are you driving, I tell her and I also let her know I'm with my mom, no response, at this point it's getting dark and I'm looking around the parking lot to see if I can find her, that's when I spot him, a young man not much older than me, in a white Nissan parked on the aisle before us with his window halfway down, staring directly at us, so I ask my mom, do you see that guy? Why is he staring? 
How much longer should we wait for Annie? She casually glances in his direction. Up until this point we had both been on our phones, not paying too much attention to anyone around us. I have since learned about the term, situational awareness. Pay attention to your surroundings people. I figured she would text me when she was almost there but she hadn't so I called her, no answer, then the man in the aisle over rolls his window all the way down, still staring and starts to blow bubbles, like actual bubbles, I can see him holding the container, gently blowing these bubbles in our direction. He pauses and smiles but not a warm smile, a sinister one, my mom and I take one look at each other and I start the car, we begin to put the pieces together when we realize that this grown man in front of us is probably Annie. Not only does he have my phone number but now he knows my car's license plate number. I'm trying not to freak out, he sees us pulling out of the parking spot and he gets out of his car and stares us down while we haul us out of there. I was praying he wouldn't follow us. And he didn't. I guess seeing me with my mom threw him off, he thought I would be alone and I'm so grateful I wasn't. I blocked the number and never got another message from Annie, needless to say. I didn't end up selling my clothes that day and I haven't been on Craigslist since.